the next brief in, uh, is dedicated to the topic how the access to KGB archives uh, has changed the presentation of a research. Our spe uh, speakers are Anna Alini, analyst at the Liberation Movement Research Center, Andrei Kugut, acting director of the Liberation Movement Research Center, Igor Rasladai, uh, lawyer at the Media Law Institute. Good afternoon. We start our press briefing, and uh, I would like to give the floor to Igor Raskaladai, and uh, he will tell us uh, uh, how the idea uh, appeared uh, uh, to research the access to KGB archives and the key uh, aspects of the new draft law uh, we will discuss. I would like to greet uh, the uh, staff of uh, archives uh, with their professional holiday. The archives uh, are a very important sources of information for researchers of experts and uh, ordinary citizens they help us to uh, find out information um, uh, about both the trends and uh, the individuals. Uh, an individual can uh, get information about his or her relatives uh, uh, in uh, within the frame of, of four decommunization laws. Uh, the access to the KGB archives uh, was uh, open by those laws uh, as adopted. Ukraine is a little bit late uh, with this uh, issue. Uh, it should have been done in 1995. We can see in Aganyok uh, magazine of 1991. Uh, this issue was dealt with to open the KGB archives, and Ukraine uh, has uh, opened the access to KGB archives only uh, today. And uh, uh, this has also uh, was mentioned in the Council of Europe's statement because uh, uh, the uh, access to uh, archives uh, can help uh, to avoid uh, um, some clashes between the groups of society uh, because otherwise uh, some myth uh, can can be uh, established, can be formed. Uh, when the draft law uh, was elaborated, uh, uh, we thought about the model uh, which we should select. Uh, we used the best practices of Poland, Baltic countries, all of them uh, went through the process of opening the access to archives, and it was 20 years ago we looked thoroughly into Polish Bulgarian um, models. And uh, we understood that we can't uh, establish loan procedures of opening the archives. And uh, the draft law uh, goes about uh, opening the archives in full and opening of all archives. Uh, KGB, Ministry of Internal Affairs, uh, Security Service, and uh, the victims uh, uh, have the right uh, to limit access to information about them uh, for their life period because such information could be very traumatic for them. So we should respect their uh, willingness uh, not to allow uh, to disclose this information. Uh, so this is the only exclusion when such an individual uh, 
prevent disclosing his personal information. In this case, the information shall be closed. Uh, first of all, access to information which is uh, maintained uh, in the governmental archives. Uh, uh, will be accessible, and uh, if the information is uh, outside the limits, uh, then uh, this information will not be disclosed. Uh, and uh, an uh, archive staff uh, shall not be liable for uh, the uh, res recipients of information. The staff of, uh, shall not be responsible for uh, for disclosure of information, and the. Uh, transitional provisions of this uh, law uh, the uh, goes that very sensitive information concerning sexual life uh, and uh, other personal information uh, this pro uh, can provide the right uh, uh, to the relatives uh, to close such information and the Ukrainian National Memory Institute uh, will have uh, uh, responsibility to manage information. This is a very modern institution like in Poland. Uh, Poland uh, use uh, um, the Institute of Memory um, to find information about those persons who were incarcerated uh, in the camps uh, during the Second World War and uh, also um, copying uh, information is also uh, allowed and uh, such activities uh, should not be uh, payable and uh, Andri Kogut will also tell us about uh, forming an uh, archive uh, for National Memory Institute. And we do not plan massive uh, movements of archives, but we are going to take archives of uh, uh, our current uh, national security services archives because this is not their function. They can have current uh, data uh, stored in their premises, but uh, the uh, data, uh, the documents concerning the past, uh, they should be transferred to other institutions and they should be uh, digitalized uh, uh, so uh, total digital digitalization also is uh, um, supposed by the adopted law. And uh, as concerned the infographics, uh, they are available online. Everyone can uh, learn uh, the contents uh, of the law about the Territorian Archives of Special Services. And uh, you can see there an algorithm how to find information about an individual. Uh, this algorithm can help uh, any individual uh, in uh, his uh, researches of information. Thank you. And these infographics will be sent to the interesting parties that are involved in uh, this uh, 
uh, process. So these are archives, uh, institutional libraries and uh, museum libraries, and also uh, for those who want to find the information on their relatives, they have uh, the opportunity uh, to um, find out the algorithm of search, what are new principles are applied, and what uh, should we do now. So now I give the floor to my colleague, Anna Alenik, and she will present the results of the expert study that we conducted this year from uh, 21st of uh, uh, March. We uh, started uh, research. Uh, um, the part was taken by the experts in different spheres, those who work with information. and. Uh, it was interesting for us how the situation changed. And uh, first, this study was conducted in 2011. And this was the second research this year. And the results that uh, we have gained, we will uh, present these results to you now. Thank you. Good afternoon. So the, uh, the dynamics of change of access to archives the criteria is dynamics of assessment of uh, uh, provision of the information. So compared with the uh, 2011, uh, 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 the quality of response from the archives is 58.1% uh, compared with the 2011. This figure increased to uh, 18%. Those who are not satisfied with the quality is 4.8%. And in 2011, there were 11.2 percent. So uh, the number of uh, uh, limitations uh, decreased 7 percent. As to the uh, tendency, the trend, uh, it's not really bright. Uh, the 34.3 percent is uh, um, assess the um, work of uh, archives positively. And this is the most positive result that was provided by experts. And the biggest part of the respondents, 50.7%, uh, are partly satisfied with the work of the archives. And others were distributed among uh, different assessments of negativity. So the assessment of uh, the work of the archives is at the same level and not satisfactory. This is the third thought of 53.7% uh, of the experts. And the second opinion uh, is 29.8%. Uh, uh, it's better, more, uh, not so bad. And uh, why this data is like this? Negative assessment, mostly. So uh, the experts uh, determine such factors as limitation of the opportunities to use uh, uh, copying equipment uh, for those experts who come to work in ar archives. Also, a uh, high price of copying. Then uh, also there are some uh, prohibitions on the use, uh, on the use of uh, equipment. And also some, uh, 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 they should provide better access to some documents in the archives. And 52.2% uh, uh, say that uh, uh, those who work in archives, they limit the access to some uh, certain cases. And 52.2% uh, say that there are uh, bureaucratic obstacles. And also, they uh, focus the, uh, the attention on the problem that uh, archives suffer from underfinancing. And it's uh, maybe it's one of the reasons why the quality of Ukrainian archives is so low. And if we compare 2011, only 3.6 percent of experts uh, in last research uh, saw a real problem in this. So maybe 50 percent increase in this. So this is a good result. Then the reasons of. Uh, um, uh, what are three main, tr three pro uh, uh, problematic trends, a political uh, component, and this is illustrated by the uh, uh, SBU archives. 
and this is a clear correlation between openness of the archives and the uh, political regime. If we compare the uh, uh, epic period of uh, Yanukovych, uh, Yanukovych's rule, um, so 79.3% uh, say that during this time, uh, working conditions deteriorated in archives. They were refused uh, any responses, uh, and uh, they, uh, there was a lot of refusals. And also, till 2015, uh, the conditions uh, uh, were better, and 77.6 respondents point this. And also, and the next component in, is uh, lack of infrastructure. So uh, central archives uh, and uh, san uh, archives of uh, state, uh, uh, central sta uh, state archives of uh, um, uh, public associations. And uh, uh, starting from the end of nine, uh, 1990s, the conditions didn't change dramatically. So. Uh, uh, here we can see that the situation is more stable than in other, other archives. And the institutional incapability, we can also uh, see this trend, and this is illustrated clearly. Uh, an example of um, the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs uh, archives. And here the situation is mainly the same during the, uh, these years, starting from 1990s, and uh, they were deteriorated during Yanukovych's rule. And here we say that uh, there's no clear administration and financial resources and uh, that uh, will provide for the work of the archi archives. So the archive is, um, uh, is uh, um, managed by 80 peop uh, 80 peop uh, eight people, and it's not enough. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, operations and processing of documents, so it's very difficult for them to cope. And uh, the archive of the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs, it contains ma many cases uh, of uh, the years of repression. So these uh, um, materials should be given to those institutions who can analyze this uh, information. And also, experts were asked to assess, and we can uh, also see the dynamics during 20. Uh, uh, 11 uh, 20, till 2015, you can see now uh, it on a slide, and we may say that there's some increase in quality of work in archives uh, of uh, uh, SBU and uh, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, but w in the central archive we see the stability. I was uh, telling you about it uh, late, uh, before. And also we assessed uh, uh, comfort of work with these uh, uh, archives and also in different periods. Uh, so we had several criteria. So response, uh, uh, the time of response, the use of copying equipment, and the uh, uh, overall servicing on the archive. As to SBU, uh, response is, uh, is about uh, 40. Uh, uh, they, uh, they uh, assessed the archive as uh, four, and uh, the scale is uh, from one to five. So uh, the highest uh, assessment w was um, uh, the overall assessment is uh, 3.93 um, uh, points. So about four. So, so this is the highest score among all other archives that were uh, studied. And uh, the Ministry of Internal Affairs uh, response, they assessed it uh, the lowest. So this is uh, uh, 39.4 percent of respondents think like this, and also they assessed this at uh, score uh, at uh, three. And uh, also uh, response is about normal, about four scores than. Uh, 
uh, they provided the highest assessment, but uh, the average assessment uh, 3.83, the uh, uh, possibility to use copying equipment. Uh, this is uh, very important for um, those who work in IB, uh, SBU, and 59% uh, of people say that uh, this uh, uh, assess, uh, th so the uh, results are not bad, but uh, um, to use copying equipment, uh, equipment in uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs archives is uh, nearly impossible, and the experts um, they uh, say they score it as uh, at uh, the lowest level, one score only, and the central. Uh, archive of uh, uh, the um, executive power, they 34% uh, uh, said that uh, uh, they estimated, they gave three scores to the level of possibility of, uh, of using copying equipment. So the archive uh, corresponds mainly to uh, their uh, requests. and. Uh, also, uh, uh, there are some percentage uh, that they uh, put uh, the lowest, uh, uh, provided the lowest score, and a half of uh, uh, people who uh, use this archive, say, um, they estimated this archive at uh, four. So, uh, also, we proposed uh, several propositions and uh, also, uh, we asked about their opinion on this. So the results, uh, on the whole, are mainly positive, as you see it on the slide. It's uh, about 100 percent results. 98.5 uh, percent of experts support that there should be um, access to the uh, information of uh, repressive organs and uh, uh, also that uh, uh, the archives should uh, uh, say that uh, SBU and uh, the Ministry of Internal Affairs should provide information on uh, repressions and also um, that um, this information should be open and uh, also 58.2% uh, uh, they uh, said about the uh, limitation of information uh, to those who uh, to those people who were repressed, uh, and uh, so uh, the uh, assessment was mainly positive. So also we uh, asked to define the ways how to optimize the activity of uh, the archives. Uh, where these um, materials on the, those who were repressed should be transferred to, uh, and in order to digitalize this information. First, the experts say that there should be a regional uh, division with coordination center in the Ukrainian Institute of National Memory, and that would be great because uh, there, there would be a geographical representation, and uh, it will be uh, good for representatives of uh, different regions. Also, uh, there should be a special law on this uh, body and also to develop a concept of work of this archive for several years. And those uh, uh, cases that are in SBU now and in internal ministry, um, they should be also uh, be transferred there and uh, also uh, uh, these uh, uh, so then the, these archives should be uh, digitalized and uh, uh, there should be information on these sources um, that uh, should be available on the internet and um, as the quality is not very good there should be uh, trainings for personnel of the archives in order to uh, establish uh, effective uh, um, work of this body. And uh, also uh, there is an emphasis that the archives are uh, underfinanced, so they should be properly fin financed in order to operate. And uh, also we can trace dynamics of uh, public interest after adoption of the law. And this dynamics 
is based on the results that is provided by SBU. These are the results from 2011-2012. Uh, so uh, to the archives of SBU, they um, got uh, 2,160 um, requests, and uh, there were in, uh, mainly information about repressed uh, relatives. So people tried to find their relatives, what happened to them. and. Um, uh, there were also tw 222 requests from uh, foreigners and 46% uh, rise uh, of uh, uh, rise in people who are interested uh, in uh, their past, in the past of their family. And this topic is very actual even during after uh, so many years. And uh, 409 uh, people, uh, they hear uh, uh, visited uh, the library, uh, these archives, the uh, reading halls of these institutions 1,194 times. Thank you, Anna. So to finalize, uh, I would like to add several comments, not only about the presentation, but also about the things which have not been said and which have not been assessed in our research. We have also one uh, archive uh, uh, this is an archive uh, of uh, <coughs> of external uh, reconnaissance uh, 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 of uh, external intelligence uh, service, and it is uh, um, it would be incorrect to compare the archives of the Ministry of Interior with this uh, outsider. Uh, it would be more complex to compare them and talking uh, and emphasizing several key remarks uh, what have already been doing now and uh, it is worth to say that uh, the revision of archive documents and cases, uh, uh, first of all, of the security service, uh, external intelligence, uh, and other bodies which uh, uh, do not have such function as storing of archives as an inherent their function. We start to uh, to elaborate infographics because uh, there are problems with uh, communicating the information about uh, the content of the newly adopted law. We know that sometimes access was denied, but thanks to to the group which we administer. We have 3,800 members in our group, and uh, some individuals uh, uh, applied to us uh, when uh, the information about their relatives uh, had not been disclosed to them. And then we addressed uh, those bodies, uh, elucidating them, the provisions of the new law, and uh, after the Yet those individuals who have previously applied to us, they were disclosed the personal information about their relatives and the past of their families. And I also would like to emphasize one um, other aspect: an archive staff is an, an archive staff is now not responsible for dissemination of information, uh, but. Uh, the, the person who received the information, the recipient who further disseminated the information, he will be responsible for dissemination of the information. According to the law, the Soviet Union's marks saying confidential they are no more valid. Secret documents uh, are uh, on, only those which are marked confidential by Ukrainian power. And as concern uh, photocopying of documents, uh, whether they could be uh, shot uh, by a 
photographic camera. Uh, their uh, copying should be free of charge according to the new law. We know that uh, payments uh, can be um, collected uh, for um, re uh, producing documents, but it, uh, this is also uh, uh, controversial to this new law. First of all, not all archives uh, bodies uh, can ensure um, the uh, implementation of the law. Uh, talking about the Ministry of Interior and its borders and the security service of Ukraine, uh, the uh, archives uh, ma maintenance is not their inherent functions. So these uh, archives uh, should be transferred from those services uh, to specialized bodies. Uh, and uh, our opinion polling also demonstrated that the focus of attention in the past uh, uh, was uh, differs uh, from the focus which we have now. Uh, now uh, the focus is on uh, the um, matters of funding. Uh, uh, once uh, financial issues are resolved, then uh, the implementation of the newly adopted law would be uh, empowered. Thank you uh, to our speakers. Are there any questions? Natalia Gazeta. Uh, newspaper. Uh, what uh, experts and how many experts uh, uh, have you polled during your research? Uh, we uh, polled the opinion of 65 historians, uh, uh, which deals directly with the archives. Uh, also, our respondents were journalists, mass media persons, uh, and uh, professional experts uh, in the cases uh, um, which requires access to the archives, and we ensured um, geographical representation. Almost all regions of Ukraine are represented in our opinion poll, so we can say that the representative uh, principle is adhered to. We uh, shall post the findings of the research on our website today. Uh, uh, anonymous uh, information is presented, but you will see uh, the categories of our experts. This information will be posted at our site as well. Thank you for your briefing. Uh, our next press briefing will be at 12.30.